Hi, everyone. Um, welcome back to At Work in Pain. Um, my name is Julia Ferrioli, and I'm joined by Chris Short. Um, we've been a little bit absent due to schedule, life, and health. Mm. Um, yes. So <laughs> we're resuming after a little bit of a uh, hiatus, I guess. Yes. Yes, we are. Yep. Um. So what do you want to talk about today? Yeah. So I was thinking we could talk about how, what we do when basically the pain or discomfort gets too bad at work. Mm -hmm. Like how do we figure out what, what we want to do? How do we communicate it to our colleagues, if at all? Right. Um, and we're talking about the pain. Uh, like you've exhausted all other work able options, right? Like you've taken all the medication you can take without putting yourself to sleep kind of deal. You've done everything else you can, heating pads, whatever it may be mm -hmm. to make yourself feel better. And things have gone past a threshold of no return when it comes to pain. I feel like, you know, well, like where it's like, you've got to do something drastic to change it. Maybe. Yeah. I think there's like, some middle ground in there though, because, you know, there's, there are definitely pain medications, mm -hmm. um, or uh, like there's Tylenol I'll, and then there's like Vicodin. I get it. Yeah. Right. But there's, you know, on the, on the level of, of, um, of how we cope with pain, there are options that do interfere with how well we function. Yes. But it's not necessarily like game over for work. Right. right. I don't know. About yeah. 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 Like I have, a, it's a gradual scale kind of thing, right? Like it's not, you know, a zero or one. It's definitely like right. a range of zero to 100, for example. Right. Like, yeah. And where we're in 100 is like, I, I'm going to take enough medication that I'm going to fall asleep. Right. Kind of deal. Yeah. And I think somewhere like around 70 there, what I, I tend to do, and I kind of, I, I started doing this unconsciously, I think, but I have like grades or buckets of tasks mm, okay. that, that I keep for myself. And there are definitely like administrative or, um, Thing, tasks that don't require a, a ton of, um, cognitive brain power. Yeah. That I do save for those times where it's like at a 70 and I'm slightly impaired. Mm -hmm. Um, but I am not yet at the point where I'm like, okay, it's time to, it's time to go to bed sort of right. thing. Yeah. I definitely have, uh, I mean, this past week, you know, we're talking, uh, KubeCon just finished yesterday and mm -hmm. since KubeCon finished, it's, it's, you know, it made me realize that like, wow, I was in a lot of pain. Like my, I woke up this morning, my back was just like mm -hmm. knotted up bad. Like, mm -hmm. can I get, can I get a massage in a pandemic? Is that a smart idea? No. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, but like, uh, yeah, like I realized that, you know, pushing myself further and harder every day will eventually catch up to you. But it wasn't like I was going so hard every day that I was hitting that 50, 60, mm -hmm. 70 kind of thing. It was like always right below the threshold of needing to crank things up, right, yeah. as far as pain relief goes. And I know for me, right, like I take Tylenol all the time. So when I go from Tylenol to something stronger, there's an effort there but keep in mind there was a period of time before i went from tylenol to something narcotic based mm -hmm. where i was in you know that area of okay i can't really function like this right now yeah and that's the area we're talking about i think right yeah i i mean well it's whatever we want but yeah. yes that's definitely an area <laughs> we uh we can talk about um because it's you know, it's, it's in the point where there's like this internal evaluation, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. A constant assessment. 
Yes. Yeah. Which is exhausting in and of itself. It, yeah. It's, it's really weird, right? Like if my schedule is not busy, mm-hmm. it will subconsciously increase the pain somehow. Really? Yeah. Like if I'm really busy, like, Keep in uh, mind, there's really busy, like, at a conference, there's really busy during the pandemic, right? Like, mm-hmm. uh, during the pandemic, really busy is I, I haven't been able to, like, use my standing desk all day, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, um, I'm always on the air or in a meeting, like, this kind of thing. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah, like, it's, you know, light duty, I would say, right now. But even just sitting here, like, I, I feel, you know, pain in my body. So yeah. it's... It's always there. It's never going away. Mm-hmm. And there are times when it encumbers my capabilities to an extent, right? Like, not just cognitively. Well, maybe it is all cognitively, but definitely physically too, right? Like, I can't sit in this chair. I have to move to a different chair. I actually have two chairs in my office, mm-hmm. both of which cost more than a $1,000. Yeah. So to to give you an idea of how much money I've dumped into this effort to try to keep me working, right. it's very high. <laughs> yeah. So, and yeah. As an aside, um, I think, well, it's a liberal use of the, of the phrase crypt tax, um, which refers to like everything that disabled folks have to have to buy right. that are much more expensive than normal mm-hmm. equipment yeah. um, in order to live their life. Um, and, you know. Well, just the medication tax by itself is oh, yeah. absurd, right? Yeah. Like our quality of living will not be fully achieved, right? <laughs> like because yeah. we have these expenditures to obtain a modest maybe, you know, simple kind of existence where it's not just nonstop pain interfering with your, you know, cognitive capabilities. Right. So let's talk about that, that, that period Mm -hmm. um, of like the 50 to 70 range of, of the pain scale. I like that we're not using um, one to 10. No, like it's, it's very (laughs) gradual, right? Like very much so. So for me, um, I know that a lot of times it doesn't creep. It's like 20 and then 70. Oh shit. That's yeah. (laughs) Like it, it will because, um, because some of what I deal with is nerve pain. Yeah. Um, and it's very like dependent on activity. Yeah. No, like where physically where my, my various joints are. Like if I'm, if I move something wrong, then yeah, it'll, it'll jump. Mm. So like what happens to you in it? Like if you're in a meeting during yeah. this time. Yeah. No. So like, thankfully the pandemic has made that easier. Mm-hmm. Cause I remember being in meetings before, right. When I was traveling where I would be like, I'm a lot of pain. And I would get up and leave to walk out of the room just to change the environment and, you know, do whatever I need to do to kind of like calm things down. And like people would text me or DM me Mm -hmm. or whatever, you know, asking what's going on. Now it's like I can just turn off my camera and go wireless and go sit in the comfier chair. Mm -hmm. Or I can actually just side DM somebody and be like, I've got to go take care of something. I'll be back in like an hour or two. Yeah. I mean, it kind of has made it a little bit easier to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that there's the, the move to remote has been absolutely amazing for many folks Mm -hmm. with chronic illnesses. Um, Yeah. Like I've got like padding on everything the way I want it. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Like I've decided that if this is the place that I'm going to spend a lot of my time, this and the bed, you know, in theory is where I'm going to spend most of my life. It's going to accommodate me. Period. So I know that for, for me before the pandemic hit, when I would go into the office, which was kind of rare for me (laughs) anyway. Um, 
but when we would, when I would be in like a team meeting where everybody was in the same room, I would just be like, y'all, I, I may like leave the chair and go lay flat on the floor Ooh. at some point during this yeah. meeting. Um, I'm still listening. I'm still here, but yeah, I'm going to be that, that person that just kind of randomly repositions their whole body, um, in order to like stay present. Interesting. You know, what I have learned, um, cause my, my pain is, is nerve damage, but it's nerve damage in the neck and shoulder yeah, back mid up or whatever you want to call it. Right. Like I realized when I bought this office chair that I'm sitting in, did you know that steel case and Herman Miller and all these different special expensive chairs actually come in different sizes? And did you know that I should be sitting in the size C extra large Herman Miller chair and not the normally bought size A or B based off price Herman Miller chair, right? Like, mm-hmm. so the actual chairs that are in these conference rooms are causing me pain sometimes. Yes. Very often, yeah. very often causing me pain, right? So I remember there was one meeting I went to in Boston a couple of years ago. We were talking to an analyst. Um, and like, I just stood in the back of the room for like a good hour of the meeting mm-hmm. because sitting in a chair was just murderous, yeah. right? Like there was some, I don't know. It was one of those brands of chairs that was too small for me. Yep. It like just hits my nerve damage in just mm-hmm. the right way to where it's like, Ooh, I'm not going to be able to sit here all day. Like I just know it immediately by sitting down. It's really weird, but yeah, I'm a large person that has a nerve injury and that nerve injury is because or can be aggravated by the chair I'm sitting. In. Mm-hmm. So like this chair is perfect. It doesn't right. like it's all the mesh parts are touching all the nerve damage parts. Mm-hmm. So it's supporting them as opposed to aggravating them. Yeah, impinging, impinging. Yeah, upon impinging, them. exactly. Yeah. So let's talk about the communication side of things. Oh, that's so, a rough one. And and I know that gets so highly dependent upon your relationship with the people, yeah. so called in the room. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I I don't take client meetings. But I know that sometimes you do, um, sometimes, which is an yeah. entirely different dynamic mm-hmm. as well. Um, well, I have a very, like, regimented schedule, right, yeah. of public appearances, right? So <laughs> it's it's super difficult for me to unplug, right? Like, there's logistics that go into that. Mm-hmm. So it's gotten to the point now where my team just knows that, like, Chris is working his ass off. Mm -hmm. He's disabled. He's going to have bad days sometimes, right? And, like, they've gotten to the point now where they're encouraging me to take it easier more, right? Like, right? Like, that's amazing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And, you know, somebody, like, I did uh, booth duty for KubeCon EU, and people were like, well, what did you get up so early for? You didn't have to do that. There was people in the EU. I was like, it was three days before the event, and... I realized that I had a conflict with the existing booth spot I signed up for. So mm-hmm. I just moved it to an earlier time. Yeah. You know, I was just trying to do my part. And even my coworkers were like, you really didn't need to do that. Right. <laughs> you were doing enough already with all the live streaming and you yeah. know, speaking and everything else that you were doing. You didn't need to volunteer for booth duty. And it's like, Okay, but like the rest of my teammates were, so why wouldn't I? You know, <laughs> I mean, it, it felt really weird to be like, "Am I special?" <laughs> like, it, you know, it feels weird when you're like, "No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna forego that because I know it's gonna be bad for me." Or communicating the fact that like you're in the middle of a live stream, and oh my god, you just did something to your neck because you had to reach down or turn or look at something or, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, you drop something, which happens to me all the time, spill something. Can't tell you how many times I've burned myself in this office trying to make coffee. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, we have a different carpet cleaner now, right? Like, <laughs> I'll <laughs> grab the carafe. I make pour-over coffee. I grab the carafe. And, you know, unstable hand, and all of a sudden, mm-hmm. you know, if I grab it with my right hand, it's... 
you know, it's getting to the point now where it's like 50, 50, I might scroll this. So I'm using mm-hmm. my left hand and it's like, wow, that's crazy. Um, so yeah, uh, it's, it's difficult to communicate that moment in time Yeah. to where it's like, I need my schedule cleared. Like that's really hard for me to do. Um, yeah, usually I don't let it get to that point because I have invested so much in, like, I literally have, you know, those footstool slash box things that you can pick up at like target. Mm-hmm. I have one of those full of like neck traction, heating pads, sleeves, all kinds mm-hmm. of stuff to just keep me from being in that scenario. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I know that my, I'm actually between, between jobs right now, but I would, I would host a lot of, a lot of meetings and there's, I, I take that responsibility very, very seriously. Mm-hmm. Um, but I hit a few points during meetings where I would. Something would reset. Well, yeah. And I would literally not be able to find the words to express myself mm-hmm. or to keep control of the meeting. And that happened enough times that I wound up like figuring out basically who was my second in command. Mm. Like, do I have a second to take over? Do you have like a shadow or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So like when I when I stop being able to like find words um when it basically I'm running a meeting, mm. um I will I am my second and say, Hey, would you mind taking over for a couple of minutes? I'm having trouble. Mm. Um which does require like this pre-existing uh, understanding. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I will also there have been times where I will outright say, Hey team, I am having some difficulty with the words. So please Ooh. like be patient with me. What's that um, like? I want to know more what that's like, because I've never had to do that before. I've never had to actually say I can't, I'm having a hard time with with words right now, other than to my spouse. Yeah. I mean, I I will admit like the first time, super vulnerable Mm -hmm. Um, and it was not comfortable at all. Um, But after that, it was actually fairly liberating. Hmm. Um, And, but it does, it does help that, Mostly I was communicating with people who knew me. Right. You no. Know, and, yeah. um, who knew kind, maybe not all the, the gory details, mm. but at least some of what, um, what I deal with. And that's where, like, I tend to go for over communication, mm. um, because A, it takes too much energy to hide this shit. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, no, like I've given up on trying to hide it, right? Like you will see me like rubbing my shoulder or applying yeah. medicine to my neck. Like, yeah, like I try to like hide it publicly, but like if we're in like a team meeting or like there's just six or seven of us kind of thing and we're actually talking about something, you'll see me pull out the, the roller mm-hmm. bar and go to town on my neck mm-hmm. just because like people don't understand or either they understand that I'm injured, but I just don't look it yeah. or they don't understand the extent of the injury. And they're like, Oh my gosh, he's applying medicine to his neck. He must need to go. And sometimes it's not the case. No. Yeah. Sometimes I'm good. Once the medicine starts working and I can continue right. on. Yeah. Sometimes that's not the case. But I, I also think it's important to like normalize talking about these things. I agree. Um, because and we're I've been, all human. Yeah, I've been, uh, incredibly graphic in my description of the, the recent procedures I've been doing yeah. that are leading up to, uh, frequency nerve ablation or radio right. frequency ablation, right? Yeah. Because that is an incredibly painful uh, procedure and the tests for them are painful, but it's like when I get the test done, past two times you know they test you twice and then you actually go do the procedure in two phases left side right side that kind of thing Mm 
Mm-hmm. So the two tests, I was like, this is what they're doing. This is what's going to happen. I'll, I'll be in a lot of pain, but I'll be working because that's, they're telling me to do things that make me hurt. So I need to go on a walk that day and I need to work. Yeah. Right. I can't drive a car because actually driving a car for long enough does hurt. Um, so the, uh, <laughs> Those two procedures, I was intentionally graphic about it mm-hmm. just to give people an idea of what was going on because all of a sudden Chris looked fine. Mm-hmm. Like Chris could turn his head like an owl. It was crazy, <laughs> you know, <laughs> right? Like I had full range of motion of yeah. all, all the joints in my neck and it was just like, this is insane. What's going on? Like I could actually look at the monitor behind me. Right. <laughs> Yeah, and that that brings up another point that we'll have to dig into at some at, at, at some point in time, mm-hmm. um, which is that people are not used to limitations mm-hmm. being dynamic. Right, they're used to hard and soft limits at best. Right, right. Like, there's no like for most people, there's no. Oh, I'm in so much pain. I have to go to bed or I'm in so much pain. I have to take something. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, I think, you know, we could probably talk for a long time about how to communicate, Mm -hmm. but I think that for the most part, it's highly personal. Yes. Um, Personal. You have to establish relationships with people, you know, build at least a quorum, right. About like, your current status, you know? Yeah. And I think it's important to note that you don't owe anyone information right. that you're not comfortable disclosing. Yes. This thing called HIPAA exists, thankfully, in the U.S. And you can hide behind it if you want to. <laughs> um. I, I think that there's, there's definitely confidentiality, Mm -hmm. um, rights and and concerns in the workplace as well. Um, it's, but it's, it's about navigating it and figuring out what, what really works both for you personally, as well as the dynamics that you have at work Mm -hmm. because people are complicated. Oh yeah. So I'm super complicated. I I fully admit it. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> um and I don't come with an instruction manual. That's the worst part. You know, I've been thinking of writing one. Seriously? Yeah. I feel like you I, have a more regimented life than I do though. <laughs> my, no, my my instruction manual will basically just be a 404. Uh, that's that's fine. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be a 500 error of some sort, right? Because like, it's just a feedback loop, right? <laughs> which, which one is the I'm a little teapot? I forget. For, no, it's 413. 413. That's what yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, anyway, I think this is a good, a good place to, to stop for now. Um, but we encourage you to leave us comments or, um, suggest future topics. Mm-hmm. We are happy to to uh, take them into the – put them into the queue, as yes. it were, which so implies we have, way more organization than – Right. We have. we have such a great, you know, yeah. organizational system, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's it for today for At Work in Pain. Again, I'm Julia, and I'm this Chris. is Chris. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Bye, y'all. Bye.